Hello, I'm Chris Williams from Rig Comics. They're bad for you, the name of my YouTube channel. Or if you're watching this on BitChute, the name of my BitChute channel is Comic Freak. Today we're doing an update on the Witcher series where the Witcher showrunner responds to Henry Cavill replacement agenda claims. Laura Hershitz responded on Twitter to claims by fans that no, they were not replacing main character Geralt with the female characters, but we'll learn all about her claims as we read this article. This past Sunday at the London Comic Con saw a panel for The Witcher held where fans learned the show would not be told from the point of view of Henry Cavill's Geralt of Rivia, but from the POV of the two female characters, which led to the question of just how much screen time Cavill had in the series. In my article, I wrote about the bait-and-switch tactic as Henry Cavill is the one featured in all the promotion. And I also remarked that this is a trend in Hollywood, which is to promote female characters at the expense of male characters, something proven by basically watching any Disney movie, Disney Star Wars, or any of the CW shows, or the recent Kevin Feige, Captain Marvel, and Avengers Endgame films, not to mention Feige's Phase 4 plans. Well, the article touched a nerve, and The Witcher showrunner Lauren S. Hersich has reported on social media. The Witcher showrunner Lauren S. Hershitz responds. Apparently, we got this response from someone called Radarian Intelligence, who went to a panel where she responded to these comments that she was getting online. And I'm going to respond to her comments right here in as most nasally a voice as possible. It wasn't easy, said Hershitz. There are eight books. I've read all of them. I know I wanted to start with the short stories. They explain what the Witchers are, etc., but I wanted to introduce Suri and Yennefer earlier. You get to meet Suri and really know her before she interacts with other characters. While the short stories are told from Geralt's perspective, the show will put the female characters, Yennefer and Suri, at the forefront of the story from the very beginning. This is to capture them before they're seen through someone else's lens. Hershitz took inspiration from Spatsky, who told her about the hardship and endearing strength of Polish women during World War II, with many men falling... During the fighting, Polish women assumed an important role. With Yennefer and Suri's roles expanded, a concern was raised regarding Henry Cavill's screen time as Gerald. Hershitz insists there's nothing to worry about. He is on the screen a lot. It's important to make sure that Shuri and Yin get their due. We need to understand them all individually so we can understand them together. Fans took to social media to question Hershitz about a possible agenda with her responses as follows on Twitter. I know what I want to ask, Lauren. What do Polish women from World War II have to do with The Witcher? I suppose the author of The Witcher series based his characters on women from World War II, but from Lauren it just sounds like virtue signaling. Now we're going over Lauren's responses to tweets. That looks like journalism. No way it doesn't, she responded. Anyone from MCM Comic Con panel want to fill our friend in on something called context? Another one from EU who said, This series is bullshit, my friend. SJW bullshit. Lauren responded with, For the love of Roach, at least call it horse shit. Great language you're using, Lauren. Here's one from Cammie Campbell. I have no problem with the show being from Siri and Yin's point of view as long as they don't overshadow Geralt or turn him into a submissive idiot. Lauren Hershutz responded with, The show is not solely from their point of view, but more importantly, the idea that having rounded female characters somehow makes the male characters less rounded is ludicrous and reductive. I think you'll find there's Room for everyone to shine. Can be crumble. I appreciate rounded female characters, but in recent years that often came at the expense of rounded male characters. Hopefully the show does not do that and can capture the amazing bond between the three of them. I'm sorry to say, Cammy, that doesn't look like that's going to happen because they're more concerned with their own identity politics than anything else. Especially as we read these next few tweets. 
Lauren tweeted, Of course I feel like I start every interview and panel talking about how the books and show are truly about a broken family. That amazing bond is the most important thing to me. I think you'll see that. Then Drama responded with, Then you can confirm that it's not affected by feminism or LGBT things, right? And this is why I have my doubts about this show that it won't be packed to the brim with identity politics. Because Lauren responded with, What do you mean affected by? As in the books, the show has strong and, and flawed male characters and strong and flawed female characters. They all shine. They all fail. It's a portrayal of actual life, not agenda. That's not what Drama asked. She asked if you're going to put identity politics in this show and make it so that no one can really enjoy it at all. Now we come to No Agenda for The Witcher. So we see that Lauren S. Hirschitz does say there is no agenda for The Witcher. However, a quick look at who writes the series reveals there could possibly be one as a writer on The Witcher. Holly Howell recently found herself in the hot seat similar to James Gunn and Ryan Johnson and deleted all her tweets. And interestingly enough, Hirschitz herself is reported to have liked the tweets. When people call you an SJW, do you think it's an insult? Because honestly, it makes me feel like they know I can crush their little racist brains with my bare hands. Hulk style, and they're scared. Holly Hall said in a deleted tweet dated November 3rd, 2018. Oh, these replies. People are in their feelings today, y'all. A deleted tweet on November 4th. 2018 states, a pinned tweet that is available to read on the Wayback Machine also offers to all trolls, past, present, and future, enjoy screaming into the void of my sick A mute button. Well, this Holly Hall sounds like a level-headed and happy person, doesn't she? The Holly Hall tweets are also archived on the Witcher subreddit. Regarding if the Hollywood agenda negatively impacts Henry Cavill and the Witcher, is presently unknown, as the series doesn't premiere on Netflix until November 20th, but it has negatively affected Disney Star Wars as merchandise sales continue to be on the decline. No one is going to their Star Wars parks, and Episode 9 is also tracking to have the lowest opening of the new Disney Star Wars trilogy. The CWDC shows are also suffering from their lowest ratings and viewership of all time, and HBO's Watchmen has seen a loss of 200,000 viewers. And here we come to the crucial point of this article. Why do they keep putting agenda politics in these shows, even though they can see it obviously doesn't work, what with Star Wars on the decline and every other franchise that is bending the knee to the NPCs is obviously hurting for, well, money. They're failing, and no one is watching it and, or cares anymore about these series. In fact, if you go and see sports, American football suffered massive financial losses when some of their players basically spoke out about their Trump derangement syndrome a few years ago. Those players basically blamed America, and the NFL basically suffered massive losses in viewership due to the fact that their viewers felt that they'd been insulted by them. How does this relate to The Witcher? It's because every time anyone basically goes at talking about politics, shoving politics down people's throats, or even goes snidely trying to sneak it inside of their of the Netflix show they're trying to get on the air, every time that happens, the viewers and their fans turn against them because we don't want to be talked down to. Because every time any of these people open their mouths to talk about it, they don't sound like they're trying to inform anyone. No, not that. They come off like they know what's best for all of us and how we should live. And this is why we turn against them, why we refuse to watch their shows. And then they respond by saying that we, of course, are misogynists and racists. And that point where, well, Drama asked if there was going to be LGBT moments in The Witcher. She was asking, is it going to take over the show? No, I would expect Lauren not to answer that question honestly because it would have hurt her bottom line. No one would have come to see her show. Most likely, this show will be an agenda-driven pile of the stuff you scrape off your boot. Now, subscribe if you like this video. Make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube is going around unsubscribing people. So make sure you're still subscribed. If you're watching my videos but you have not subscribed, please subscribe to me. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Read comics. They're bad for you. 
then go over to BitChute and subscribe to my BitChute channel, Comic Freak. Hit that bell for notifications, hit that like button, and leave some comments down below. And could you please share this video? Share it on Twitter and share it on Facebook. Share it anywhere you think it would do the most good because YouTube is not going around promoting their YouTube creators anymore. And it would really help me if you could please share this video. It's plug-in time. Keep checking back in future videos for more information on my own upcoming independent comic book scum dogs i'm chris williams and i'll be back again tomorrow with another video or review